So as we start this problem, first thing we should set is where is the reference point. So reference point for us is zero. Let's set as the lowest point as our zero as indicated in this problem. So therefore the line on the bottom will be our reference point. Or that's the point where we all analyze the location of the roller coaster as it travels from point one, point two, point three, and four. So it shows over here the problem. A roller coaster car shown below is dragged up to point one. Of course, it's going to be um, dragged upward to position one where it's released. So when it's released, it's allowed to coast around or coast along the track. Assuming, make the assumption that there's no friction, so frictional losses are to be considered negligible. Calculate the velocity at each point, or at points 2, 3, and 4. 2, 3, and 4. And then complete an energy table indicating the type of magnitude, uh, indicating the type, the magnitude, and the total energy at each point. So there's two uh, types of energy that we're trying to um, use here in this uh, concept. Uh, first one is the uh, potential energy or gravitational potential energy which means that this is mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity which is 10 multiplied by the height and our kinetic energy which is one half m v squared so the velocity at each point velocity at each point so it means that our total energy should always be equivalent to each other so what is ingoing total energy so ingoing total energy is the same as total energy at every point so total energy should be equal in all of each point so let us begin analyzing point one so for point one let's use the green ink so now what I'm going to do is move our video right here So total energy at point one. So let's figure out energy at point one. Hmm. Usually when you start from the beginning, point one is always assumed as initial velocity, which is zero. This is your initial velocity, which is zero, because roller coasters doesn't start to move until it's allowed to coast down the top hill. So in the beginning, it should always be analyzed that there is no velocity yet. There's no velocity yet. So therefore, at point one, so at point number one, let's analyze it. Let's start with the potential energy. So the potential energy is mgh. So mass, okay. acceleration due to gravity, which is g, that is 10, multiplied by the height, which is 35 meters. So this will give us 10 times 35, which is equivalent to 350. That is in terms of the mass, in terms of the mass. Now, how about for the kinetic energy? That is one half M and then zero because this initial velocity is zero. So that will give us equivalent to zero. So our total energy 
All we have to do is add those two numbers together, as always. So let's put the addition sign. So that will give us a total energy in the beginning that is equivalent to 350 m plus is zero giving us an answer of 350 m so this will be our total kinetic this will be our total energy at point one now let's proceed to point two at point two this is going to be a slightly different at point two So at point number two, as we have already established that the initial velocity will always be equivalent to the outgoing energy. If and only if there's no friction, then we can assume that everything will be in the form of potential and kinetic energy. And frictional losses will not be considered. So at this point, all we have to do is copy the total energy. Okay, so copy the total energy. So we all know the total energy in the beginning at any point is the same. So total energy is also 350 M. 350 M. Okay. So what is our potential energy? So let's try to figure out the potential energy. So gravitational potential energy is simply equivalent to hmm, that's mass multiplied by 10, which is our acceleration due to gravity. But what's the height? The height at point 2 is 0. So therefore, we do all know that the potential energy is 0 at point two since there's no height now how about the kinetic energy so let's put the kinetic energy which is one half mass and then what is the velocity at this point oh nothing is giving it so v squared okay so v squared but we all know the total energy is simply equivalent to our in energy potential energy plus, plus kinetic energy so we can make this equation so we can equate total energy at number two is equivalent to potential energy plus kinetic energy okay e by plugging in the values of potential energy and kinetic energy and the total energy. So total energy is 350 M. So th this one is right here. Okay. Potential energy, which is zero, plus the kinetic energy that we just derived which is one half m v squared now 350 m is equivalent to one half m v squared so looking at this equation we can always cancel out our masses because if you divide both sides by the by m okay why how did i cancel m so I'm just showing you the way, showing you the solution. So that is divided by m on both sides of the equation. So if I divide both sides by m, I will cancel out my masses. Now what's left is 350 equals 1 half v squared. So now it is possible to solve it.
it is possible to solve the velocity and the velocity is 350 so you cross multiply so 2 will go on the upper side of the, of the other side of the equation so we can say that that is 2 multiplied by 350 equals v squared Now going out to this side so we can finish the rest. Now that is 700 v squared. Oh, I can just say v squared is 700 because that's 350 times 2. So let me just drag this solution downward. Or we can take the square root of 700. So the velocity is basically the, seven, the square root of 700. So let me just use the calculator. 700. So that is 26.46. So the velocity at that point, at point number two, is 26.46 meters per second. So let me just write it here. 0.2. Okay, so let's get back here. 0.2, the velocity. At 2 is 26.46 meters per second now let's move to the next one which is point three point number three okay, so let me just write starting here at point number three Again, from the relationship that T energy is equivalent to T out. So we started with a, a total energy of 350 meters. So we can just say that the total energy at this point, whether we like it or not, should always be the same. So that is 350 multiplied by the mass. So it's dependent on the mass. So we multiply it by the mass. Now in terms of potential energy, this time it's not the same as point one and point two where one of the form of energy is zero but this time both of those energies are present so let us try to calculate the potential or the gravitational potential energy at point three which is mass m multiplied by g which is the acceleration due to gravity 10 meters per second squared multiplied by the height which is at this point that is 28 meters and this will give us a total energy of or potential or gravitational potential energy of 280 m to validate that our answer is correct because 280 compared to potential energy of 350 why is it greater because the height of 35 is greater than 28 so definitely the potential energy at point 3 is not the same as the potential energy in the beginning it's a little bit lower but some of the energy is converted into what we call the kinetic energy which is one half mv squared again just like what we did at point number two since velocity is not given and we are supposed to be figuring out the velocity using the equation the total energy let me just put the divider right here so total energy is equivalent to the gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy at this point 
total energy is still going to be the same, which is 350M is equivalent to the potential energy of 280M. plus one half m v squared. Hmm. I realized that I can actually factor out m on both on this side of the equation. So if I have 350 m, so if I put m parentheses 280 plus one half v squared. So again, M is pulled out, okay, pulled out from the equation on the right side. So we can say that we can cancel our M's, okay. Cancel our M, just like what I showed in, in a solution at point two, we can just immediately cancel our M's. So now what's left is 350, 280, one half, V squared. Let me move it a little bit higher for our solution. Now 350 to 81 half and V uh, one half V squared. Okay, so let's place let's subtract both side by negative by 280. So that is 280 over here minus 280 this will cancel out our 280 here and what is 350 minus 280 so all we have to do is just subtract so this will give us zero this is simply equivalent to minus 280 so that is 70. so now we can just write this as 70 equivalent to one half V squared. Okay. Now again, follow the same procedure of cross multiplying. So 2 multiplied by 70 V squared. 2 times 70 equals V squared. Or we can say that is 140. Okay. So that is 140. And take the square root of 140. So this is 140. So instead of V, uh, V squared, so I want to figure out the value of velocity. So take the square root of both. And V therefore is simply equivalent to square root of 140 which is equivalent to 11.83 meters per second so let's validate our answer okay let's validate our answer Earlier it was 26.46 at the bottom. Then how come it's only 11.83? Because it's higher, so the higher you go, the velocity will decrease because it is converted into potential energy, gravitational potential energy to be exact. So velocity will definitely be not the same as when it is lower. So the higher the elevation is the lower the velocity because it has lower kinetic energy so the velocity at this point is 11.83 meters per second so far we are on our last point which is point number four so let us work on point number four so point number four so at our point number four.
So this is point number four. So still total energy, still going to be 350M. The potential or the gravitational potential energy is the same process of mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity 10 and then you multiply it by the height but at this point height is 15 meters and our potential energy or gravitational potential energy is 150 m with our kinetic energy still the same process of one half mv squared so first step is for us to solve for the velocity Now, let's equate the total energy and the sum of those two energies. Total energy, potential gravitational energy, or gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy. By plugging in the values, and that is 350m equals potential energy of 150m plus the kinetic energy which is one half mv squared so just like in the different process now we can just immediately cancel our masses we can follow the same process and then still cancel it so we are actually cutting one step shorter because now we are aware what's the process to be done so 350 equals 150 plus one half v squared let's subtract both sides by 150 so this will give us zero and on this side zero zero and that is one minus one so that's 200 so this will give us an equation that is equivalent to 200 equals one half v squared again we can multiply those two cross multiply so this will give us 2 multiplied by 200 equals the square of the velocity so what is the square of the velocity so that is 400 v or we can say that velocity at this point at point number four So let's take the square root, which is 20 meters per second. So, so far, we were able to solve for the different velocities. Okay. So different velocities. So different velocities at each point. So this one is the velocity at 4 is 20 meters per second. So you have different velocities and you have different uh, kinetic uh, potential energy. So in the second part of this video, we will complete the table to... Um, Com uh, complete the table as it is part of the requirement. Now let's proceed with the process of uh, completing this equation, uh, completing this problem with our solution. So let's figure out the kinetic energy and potential energy at each point and what is the total energy. Okay. So at point number one, point number one, so let me just zoom it in. Let's zoom it in so you can see the different numbers. Hope you can see it. You can always zoom it in and, and look at the numbers. And I will also attach a copy of the solution. So point number one. So point number one, the velocity is zero. 
So the potential energy is simply 350 M, which is right here, 350 M. So let's put 350 M. And since the kinetic energy is zero, so therefore we can say that our, or let me just show you the process here. For point number one, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So if I have one half multiplied by the square of zero, and let's put our m at the other side because that it will be a variable so this will give us a kinetic energy that is simply equivalent to zero. So therefore 350 plus zero will give us total energy of 350 M. So for the second equation, or for the second point, our velocity is not zero anymore, but that is 24, 26.46. And the unit, of course, is meters per second. So let me just put some information right here. That the unit is meters per second. Over here, our unit is in joules. This one is in joules per kilogram because we're talking about mass. And this one is J because that is per unit mass. So what is the square of 26.46? So right here, what? how much potential energy do we have? We all know that the potential energy is zero because there's no height. So let's put zero right here. And then now, how about the kinetic energy? How much kinetic energy do we have? Well, you can say it's already potential energy, uh, kinetic energy of 350M, but let's just prove it, which is, I'm going to skip writing the equation now. I'm just going to go straight to this step, which is 1 half multiplied by the square of 26.46. Twenty six point forty six squared and this will give us seven hundred divided by two that is three hundred fifty M. So if I place three hundred fifty M over here, or approximately three hundred fifty M, then the total energy is still gonna be the sum of those two numbers, so three hundred fifty M. Now for point three the velocity at point 3 is at 11.83 meters per second. The kinetic energy based on this calculation over here is 280m. So how much kinetic energy do we have? So why don't we just calculate it the same process where the kinetic energy is one half multiplied by the square of the velocity which is 11.83 11.83 so that is 140 divided by 2 so that's 70 so 280 plus 70 that will give us also 350. So this one is 70 M. So this is now our 70 M based on our calculation. So total energy is also 350 M. So far, I am in compliant with total energy in should be the same total energy. So this values over here should be the same on all of them if you add these two numbers right here. Last but not least is point number four, which we calculated to have a velocity of 20 meters per second. 
So the potential energy at that point is 150 M. So we should be coming up with an answer that at least it is 200 M to come up with 350. So let's take a look at our calculation. Kinetic energy, one half. And then the square of the velocity of two of 20. I'm about to say the answer. So 20 times 20, so that's 400 divided by two. That is 200 M. So whatever the mass is, that is your calculated equation. So 150 plus 200, this will give us an answer or solution of 300 M. So this will be our energy table. Let me just zoom it in. This is our energy table, the completed energy table, and that is 